Everyone has heard of Christian McCaffrey. He almost won the Heisman at Stanford, has become a superstar for the Carolina Panthers, and will go down as one of the most electrifying college football players of all time. Some may know he had a father who played in the NFL and another brother who played at Duke. You also can't forget Luke who played at Nebraska. Yes, I am missing one, and it is the one who is supposed to be the biggest deal out of all the brothers, Dylan. Dylan McCaffrey, who at one point was a five-star quarterback prospect coming out of the state of Colorado, was headed to Michigan and was the future of the Wolverines program. After only a couple of years there, though, McCaffrey has flamed out and he's no longer even playing at the FBS level. So how does he go from a five-star recruit in the future of the Wolverines program to someone who's playing for his dad at the FCS collegiate level? Well, you're going to find out in today's video as we're going to talk about the rise and fall of Dylan McCaffrey. But before we get into it, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, and I know we can do better than that, so be sure to hit that button, smash that like button for the algorithm, and let me know another player or topic I could do next. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Dylan McCaffrey. In order to understand what went wrong for Dylan McCaffrey, we first need to go back in time. As I previously mentioned, he was born and raised the son of an NFL player and the brother of the legend of Christian McCaffrey. Dylan always loved football and was a bigger deal arguably. His parents both played sports at Stanford, his older brother played at Duke, and then obviously Christian played at Stanford, so his family was supposed to produce athletes who were both smart and athletic. The McCaffreys grew up in the state of Colorado and his dad eventually got into coaching. Dylan ultimately took a liking to the quarterback position and his dad would help him foster a love for the game. Dylan would end up blowing up and when he got to high school, at one point he was a five-star recruit and the second best quarterback in his class. He went to Valor Christian High School, and while he was there, he led them to their sixth state championship in seven years and threw for over 6,000 yards in 68 touchdowns in only two years of varsity starting. He was a big deal in the recruiting scene and eventually committed to Michigan over the likes of UCLA, Nebraska, Penn State, Duke, and a handful of other programs. He had this to say, quote, The biggest factor was that Michigan is a great academic institution. It's one of the top five public schools out there. Another big factor was Coach Harbaugh, Coach Fish, and that entire coaching staff. They're all going to put me in the best position to succeed. So yeah, Harbaugh at the time was considered the quarterback whisperer, and Jed Fish was a big-time quarterback guru, and he is now the head coach in Arizona. McCaffrey also said that Harbaugh's history with developing quarterbacks and the job that he did with Michigan in 2015 caught his attention. He said, quote, It was impressive what he did last year. He didn't have his own recruiting class, and he pushed Michigan up to top 20 in the country. That's pretty incredible. He just used the talent he had and made them a lot better in one year. McCaffrey could have waited a while to commit, but his coach was not surprised that he committed earlier, saying, quote, he could have waited and made it a big deal, but that's not who he is and not how the family operates. His humility would not allow him to take away from the seniors. As a fun fact, his backup was actually a guy by the name of Blake Stenstrom, who was actually a quarterback at Colorado for a while. Scouts were also super high on McCaffrey, as one even had this to say. Quote, McCaffrey is ideal size for a quarterback and an accurate arm, whether he's in the pocket or throwing on the run. He has great feet and mechanics, and he plays the game with a lot of poise, as pressure situations never seem to phase him. McCaffrey has a high football IQ and plays the game with minimal mistakes. Despite that, McCaffrey was actually bumped down to a four-star recruit, and this did worry some Michigan fans, but he was still a huge deal. According to 24-7 Sports, Dylan was the number five pro-style quarterback, a four-star recruit, and the 123rd best player in the class of 2017. He was going to be the future of the Wolverines program, the best of all the McCaffrey brothers, and the sky was the limit for him. So what went wrong at Michigan? Well, let's rewind and go through his entire Michigan career. Going into 2017, Dylan would decide the redshirt, and he was actually so good that he was the scout team offensive player of the year. In 2017, they could have potentially used him though, as the Wolverines struggled at the quarterback spot. Houston transfer John O'Corn threw six interceptions compared to two touchdowns. Brandon Peters couldn't exactly get the job done, and Wilton Spate had gone down with an injury. It was a little bit of a down year in 2017, but Dylan would fight and get better in the offseason, and going into 2018, he would have the opportunity to potentially play. Jim Harbaugh had brought in former five-star and Ole Miss transfer Shea Patterson to be the quarterback, but Dylan was not eliminated from the battle. Eventually, there became a four-man quarterback battle between Shea Patterson, Dylan McCaffrey, Brandon Peters, and a true freshman by the name of Joe Milton. Their offensive coaches called it a tie in the spring, 
as they wanted all the quarterbacks to potentially battle it out. Dylan had this to say, quote, I've gotten athletically better, and I think the biggest thing is I now know my teammates who I'm throwing to. I know what guy is going to get me what, and that really helps as a quarterback now. While Dylan fought his butt off to try to be the starter, Shea Patterson's SEC experience was going to win out. This didn't stop Dylan from getting in the game, though. In week one against Notre Dame, he actually went four of six for 22 yards and also carried the ball three times for 10 yards. Against Western Michigan, he threw his first career touchdown in a 49-3 blowout win, and then the following week against Nebraska, he actually went three of eight for 86 yards and a touchdown. His best play of the year came late in their blowout win over number 15, Wisconsin, took a QB run to the right, and went 44 yards to the house for a score. He finished his redshirt freshman campaign going 8 of 15 for 126 yards with two passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown. The sky was going to be the limit for him in the future, but he had to spend one more year as a backup in 2019. Against Middle Tennessee, he went 2 of 2 for 17 yards and also had a rushing touchdown. He barely appeared in their double overtime win over Army, either for 40 yards in their loss against Wisconsin, threw a touchdown in their bullet win over number 8 Notre Dame, and then appeared in their road win over Maryland. Because Shea Patterson was still the guy, McCaffrey was still learning behind him, and he was going to have his opportunity in 2020. He finished the 2019 campaign with 116 passing yards and a touchdown, with one more rushing score on the ground. Going into 2020, there was going to be a three-man quarterback battle for the starting spot. It was likely only going to be two guys, though. Cade McNamara was a little farther behind and was not expected to be in the thick of it. The other guy was a dude by the name of Joe Milton. We all know who Joe Milton is, as he was poised as the next Cam Newton coming out of the state of Florida, and this battle went back and forth. Dylan had been there for a little while and had both an arm and a great skill set, but Joe Milton was this athletic freak who seemingly had the highest ceiling of anyone on the roster. It was going to come down to those two, and it was going to be neck and neck. Well, at least it was until Dylan quit. Dylan decided to enter the transfer portal. He ended up graduating, so he'd become a graduate transfer and was immediately eligible for the fall. Joe Milton had struggled his entire time at Michigan, and Cade McNamara became the starter by the end of the year. Who knows how Dylan would have done? but I wonder if he wishes he would have stayed. In terms of where Dylan was going to go next, he ended up going back home to Northern Colorado, where fun fact, his dad is the head coach. His dad actually would offer an opinion on what happened as he had this to say. Quote, Dylan wanted to come home and he wanted to live in Colorado and he wanted to play at UNC. As a coach, obviously I'm extremely thrilled because he makes us a whole lot better, but also as a father, it's a really cool experience being able to coach your son. It was a little bit disappointing to see him go down to the FCS level, but he was with his dad, and the expectations were going to be a little bit lower. So, how has he done at Northern Colorado so far? Well, so far in 9 games, he's thrown for 1,309 yards, 5 touchdowns, and 7 picks, with 4 more scores on the ground. 3 of those 7 picks came in a loss against Montana State, but overall it doesn't seem like Dylan is setting the world on fire like many thought he would. It's crazy because at one point he was a 5 star recruit, had led his team to 4 straight state titles, and was supposed to be the best of the 4 brothers. Unfortunately for both Luke and Dylan, neither of them figured it out at the power 5 level when it came to quarterback, and both ended up transferring. We'll never get to know how Dylan would have done at Michigan, and at this point it is safe to say he's been a bust at the collegiate level, but he still has a great story. I know he's going to do great things in life, and I don't want to put him or his family in a negative light. What do you guys think, though? Why did Dylan McCaffrey not work out at Michigan? Who's another big-time prospect I can take a look at in my next video? Why can't Michigan ever have a good quarterback? Let me know your answers down in the comment section. Smash that like button if you want to support today's video, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.